Zorark. But sure. you kind of try to mitigate that too with Marshadow GX or maybe Clefairy or something like that. And we actually see Adam here has a Marshadow GX in his deck. And he also plays Parallel City as well. Should be a pretty interesting matchup. It looks like players are getting set up. Basic Pokemon have been placed. You see your two players on the screen playing the first round here in day two, hoping to rack up some wins and eventually make top eight. Yeah, we actually saw Fabian on stream last or uh, yesterday. And he actually won both of his games in his match with Kartana's Blade GX. Uh, one of my favorite GX attacks in the game. Super simple, one medal, take a prize. Hopefully we'll be seeing some uh, Kartana's here as we look at the prizes. All right, so these are Adam. Adam's prizes. There's a Dawn Wings and a Max Elixir, but everything else is really just, you play a lot of those. And let's go take a look at Fabian's as well. A 1-1 one, one Zork line and two double We've colorless. We've seen a lot of double colorless prized on stream this weekend. They do not want to come out to play hiding right. in the prizes. So remember, this is game two and Fabian lost game one. So he is going first. His hand is looking pretty sweet here. Has that mysterious treasure for a Tapu Lele if he chooses to get Bridget. And then he has double Zorark next turn. And it looks like that's what he's going to do. Pulls a Tapu Lele to the front of his deck, uh, pulls that Bridget as well. We've seen this play over and over again, and I think we'll see it uh, in most tournaments for as long as these two cards are regal, eyeing up some Zoroas here. So what do you think that uh, Fabian's game plan is going to be here? So if you look at the matchup on paper, you're like, oh man, Fabian wins this like 100%, right? You have Zorark to just take care of Donwing's Necrozma, and then you have Garbodor and all your Psychic Attackers to take care of literally everything else in his deck. But the thing is, it's a lot of moving parts. And if you start having Garbotoxin active, then you have the possibility to run out of like draw as well. Right, you're kind of shutting yourself off there. As we see Fabian just plays that Bridget, puts some basics on the bench and passes the turn to Adam. Yeah, I really like the Latios in this matchup. Just being able to, for a double colorless, Snipe 30-30, and then since most of his deck is weak to Psychic, it actually does 60. It's a uh, one hit on an Inke. Yeah, Latios is actually a really interesting card for this tournament. Uh, it has a lot more range than you'd expect. You know, it's a non-EX uh, tax with a DCE, but the, like you said, the, the kind of type advantages you get, it makes it really interesting. Every time we've seen Latios, it's been kind of a big player on the board. Yeah, and I also wouldn't be surprised if he actually tries to go for that second attack on Latios, try to take a big one-hit knockout on maybe something like this Mewtwo GX. As so a Mewtwo GX, not a card we see all the time, but like you said, this in the pure psychic version of Malamar, it's you really need it. I've seen a lot of players uh, yeah, like so playing one or two. You kind of need that one-hit potential. Sure, you have Necrozma, and it does hit like a truck. But <laughs> discarding all the psychic energies to deal just massive amounts of damage, I think 60 times the number of psychics you discard. But that's not really enough against cards like Zorark GX, whereas Mewtwo GX, its GX attack is just 200 damage. Side Strike GX, and that, that, that's pretty good. Yeah, two, 200 is uh, not, never really that bad as we see a uh, typically a Wonder Tag grab a Sycamore. He has already played the Cynthia for this turn, so he's just kind of preparing for next turn. Yeah, we actually saw him Ultra Ball away that Marshadow GX for his first action of the game. A card that you might think, well, yeah, it's pretty good against Zorark, but when your opponent has Garbotoxin out, that does nothing. Yeah, we haven't really seen a whole lot of Marshadow in the standard format, but I'm, I would be interested to see how it's worked out for Adam so far in this tournament. Oh, and here we go. Mewtwo GX making the first move. 30 damage, and with the weakness, it does 60. 10 short of knocking out that Trubbish, though. Just going to go ahead and pass. And look at that. Two Zorark GXs. This is a kind of classic Zorark. Just, uh, Fabian's going to now be able to trade through his whole deck. Uh, just such a huge advantage to just play Zorarks on turn two. Yeah, and uh, the Mewtwo for Adam will get kind of dangerous as the game goes on. Just being able, with its full burst attack too, just adding a bunch of psychic energies can take big numbers. We see an Ultra Ball for Fabian. Looks like he's going to get a Garboder, the Garbotoxin ability, perhaps a Float Stone coming down as well. Yeah, you have to prioritize that in this matchup. And I mentioned, see, or hear about 
how game one went is if he actually got Garbo Garboder up and Garbotoxin active. Adam plays two Field Blower. Uh, sometimes you see them go up to three just because they're kind of afraid of Garbotoxin. Yeah, I mean, Gar Garbotoxin just shuts down this entire deck, basically. And the whole point is that you're playing cards that are, that are good because you have Malamars, and when you can't Psychic Recharge, you know, Detaching three energy from hand is pretty ambitious. When you're forced to play a fair deck, then <laughs> you know something's wrong. Yeah, exactly. Here's an end. Both players going to six cards. Oh, he does, does hit get the float, the float stone. stone. All right. But he does not have an energy in his hand, so he's going to have to rely off these trades to try to find it. Yeah, first one misses. No energy in hand. Second one. No. Still no energy. So it looks like no attack here from Fabian for this turn. You actually see that enhanced hammer in his hand as well. That's not a card you want to see in this matchup. It will most likely be traded off next turn. Yeah, and we see the floatstone go on the Gar Garboder. That's going to turn on Garbotoxin. He's going to go ahead and retreat to the Zorg, even though I don't believe he can attack. And yeah, no energy like we said. Just going to have to pass the turn back. Parallel City also coming into play. Adam just quickly discarding that Tapu Lele. Yeah, so Parallel City kind of shuts off Adam's uh, choices for attackers. He's like, okay, well, you have three Inkes in play and a Mewtwo. I have Garboder out and just paralleled you. You can't play anything more down. It, it really forces him to have that Field Blower in his hand right now. Looks like we're considering an attachment to the Mewtwo GX. We do see that Guzma up the Garboder. Oh, yeah. He has the perfect answer for that turn two Garbotoxin. And that's just Mewtwo GX, full bursting, four knockout. And thanks to that float zone on that Inke. And so no more Garbo Toxin to worry about, although it can come down again here. Uh, Fabian does wisely bench the Trubbish. And here's a Rescue Stretcher putting that Garboder back in his hand. There's the evolution. And it looks like Garbo Toxin is going to come back online. Yeah, I think he kind of planned this out. Yeah. I mean, it's so strong. We've seen, uh, we saw Fabian play on stream last, uh, yesterday. And a, a constant kind of tension in the game was, is Garbo Toxin up? And I remember there were games where he could only play one Trubbish. And so once they knock out the Garboder, it's, they, you know, he can't rebuild until the next turn. And just keeping Garbo Toxin online for as many turns as possible, especially against the deck that's all focused around abilities, is just exactly what you want to be doing. Yeah, and again, uh, the one benefit about this deck, so you knocked out my Garboder. Well, now I can trade again. Uh, that's a pretty good ability, so thanks. And okay, now my abilities are turned back on. And we see immediately the trade, discarding a Tapu Lele. Wow, but again, I, those two double colorless in the prizes are really hurting him right here. He has those two unit energies in hand, but still really won't be able to make an attack this turn. And I don't think he got a tool either. It looks like he can't turn on Garbotoxin. He's just going to go ahead and field blower that floatstone, play a Zora onto the bench. Hey, with only uh, four double colorless and three unit energy, he's going to be forced to use one of the unit energy to just retreat. Gladios valuing that for later, leaving Zora up and just passing the turn. Yeah, this is not looking good, and Adam's hand is pretty strong right now. He drew a Cynthia for the turn and has a Mysterious Treasure for a Malamar if he chooses to. There goes the Ultra Necrozma. I'm sorry, Don Wings Necrozma. There's a Malamar coming right into play. And he does have the option between Cynthia and End. Chooses for the Cynthia. He senses Fabian's kind of stalling a little. Like, his hand is stalling a little bit. I said earlier that attaching three energy was pretty ambitious. But uh, when Fabian's is not presenting any threats, it's, uh, you, you can just do it and not worry about it. And just, just be very, very far ahead. Yeah, if you uh, just don't. It's basically like playing solitaire to see if your deck is consistent. Right. right. Th that's what this game feels just, like right no, now. Nothing on Fabian's side of the board <laughs> has really mattered besides that uh, Garboder last turn. All right, and so that Mewtwo is fully powered. We'll take the knockout with full burst just because, yeah, that does a lot of damage. Sweet. 30 times the number of psychics you have on the Mewtwo. Resistance will not matter here. Latios gets promoted. Adam takes a prize down to four. Here's going to be an N. Four cards for Adam, six for Fabian. Uh, one of the ways that Fabian can pull back into this game, it's certainly not over yet, but that Mewtwo is pretty threatening, just sitting there kind of unopposed. Uh, Garboder, even though Garbotoxin isn't online, Garboder is up, so just a tool will turn it online. But at this point, it's really unclear who that benefits more. Yeah, um, Fabian really just needs to dig through his deck to try to find the two double colorless that are there, just so he could try to get the double colorless that are in his prizes. Um, I guess the one good thing about it is 
This end puts Adam down to four, and he only has one Malamar in play. Uh, so there's kind of a silver lining. Yeah, I mean, you can put him down to four. He can even turn on Garber Toxin after he uses his trades, so at least he'll get one turn of them, which is what and, he's doing. Wow, again, after two trades, no double colorless here. He does have a ton of tools in his hand, so Garber Toxin is now active. Yeah, Garber Toxin yeah. online. Are we going to see him make the same play? No, he just goes ahead and passes, leaves the Latios up in the active position. Two Malamars now on Adam's side of the board. It's interesting that he actually chose not to attach the unit energy. Uh, he still might just be like, well, I haven't drawn my double colorless yet. I play four, so I'm going to draw one. Yeah, it is kind of a waste if you have to attach a unit and then attach a double colorless. It feels really bad to commit that many resources to one Pokemon. Yeah, the unit energy does not provide dark, so Trickster GX is off the table. Adam just looks at the top four with his max elixir. Man, what a hand here. That end of four gets him the Fury Belt and two Malamars. And wow. End of his own on the back end. Still suffering a little bit due to that parallel city. Uh, it's kind of really preventing from setting up, preventing him from setting up much more than this Mewtwo. But I mean, look at the board; he just doesn't need it. Yeah, no. Uh, and you had the two energy on that Malamar, so if this Mewtwo does by some chance get knocked out next turn, you can just yeah, okay, I'll bring up the Malamar, charge up my attacker, retreat, and then I'm back in business, baby. And there's a knockout. Adam Hawkins halfway through this game, three prizes remaining. Will he go to ten and zero? I can see how he's gone. I don't know so far. Uh, his deck has been pretty sweet, especially against this just defenseless Zorark. Well, like we touched on earlier, I think when, when the Malamar deck first came out, I think a lot of people were kind of focused on this version, right? Like pure psychic. Um, and then we've seen it kind of break off into the Ultra and Necrozma decks like you were talking about. But this one does seem, seems like it offers a little bit higher consistency, maybe for a little bit lower power level as the exchange. Well, one reason is you don't have to play Metal Energy. Exactly. Metal Energy really slows the deck down, uh, even though Ultra Necrozma is such a powerful Pokemon. And with the addition of Fighting Fury Belts, which we really haven't seen that much in Malamar, uh, it really makes your few attackers just powerhouses. And Fighting Fury Belts actually really good on Marshadow GX. And there is the Field Blower from Fabian turning off his own Garbotoxin. Yeah, he actually trade. chose... Uh, to do it before retreating as well, but he has another float zone in hand, so trying to get those trades. He finally finds a double colorless, but who needs it now when you can get Trash Lancia active? And yeah, there we see it. Trash Lance Garboder, the, uh, a real nightmare of the format for a while, but hasn't seen too much play recently. But hey, he's still here, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the Garboder is a type of card where you... You have to, the, it's very metagame dependent, right? Yeah. Once people start playing heavy item decks again, they forget about Garboder, and then you can come back, and I mean, we see Fabian's 8 0 and 1 here. Yeah, he's definitely taken advantage of the way the format has shaped up, and even now, Adam's discard has a ton of items in it just from him trying to set up through this game. Here's a retreat. We are going to see a Trash Lance for the knockout. That's two prizes for Fabian and dealing with uh, Adam's only attacker here. Although we do have that Malamar set up with two energy. Uh, the one time where a Bridget for one is actually exactly what you need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brid Bridget for one literally can't play anything else, but uh, Adam will be pretty happy with it. It'll be interesting to see what attacker he goes for. There's not really a big psychic threat, so I actually love that Necrozma choice here. Yeah, he just goes, going to play the Necrozma down. Now he has another attacker up. But the thing you have to think is... Oh, yeah, he's actually attacking with this Malamar with Garbotoxin active. He's not going to be really be able to charge up, but Malamar dealing 60 is exactly enough to take the knockout on that Trashland Garboder. Two prizes remaining for Adam. We see the first double colorless of the game come down on the side. We see the late Bridget here from Fabian needing a basic Pokemon to take a knockout on this Malamar. Remember, it has 90 HP, and it's not weak to Dark. It's weak to Psychic, so... I, I, I personally oh. have a, did a misplay where you parallel yourself and then and you miss attack the, the Malamar and miss the knockout. Fabian's not going to miss the knockout, though, thanks to that Kartana GX card that you are in love with. It's great. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a giant fan. <laughs> Necrozma active for Adam. Psychic Energy, Fighting Fury Belt, Professor Sycamore, seven new cards. Yeah, and 
this is where we see the power of Garbotoxin. Again, uh, Adam was just kind of dominating this whole time, but thanks to Parallel City and that Garboder, he really couldn't get a second attacker up behind that Mewtwo GX. So right now, we kind of see him like, okay, I need to get these field blowers right away. Yeah, he, he's just been missing the ability to shut off that Parallel City. I mean, I think even more than the, than the, the Garboder, really, Parallel City, he just couldn't play Pokemon then. He's had to deal with one attacker the whole time. Yeah, Parallel City is definitely one of the best stadiums we have right now. Rescue Stretcher going to go ahead and shuffle three Pokemon in. Mysterious Treasure is going to go ahead and immediately find one of them. Yeah, it could be that Me Too GX he just put back in. Remember, it is a truck. Oh, but he goes for that Inke. Could we see maybe something put to sleep? Ooh, it's spicy. We have a, does get the Inke and just going to go ahead and pass the turn back to Fabian, who now is uh, maybe turning a corner? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, the field blower here coming down, getting rid of that Fighting Fury Belt means he will be able to take a two-hit knockout on this Necrozma. Just, yeah, just 100, 100 there. <laughs> Ultra Ball was the top deck for Adam. Needs to put something together this turn. He, he just needs those field blowers. I see one in the deck. Gets another Malamar out. Again, Malamar not doing a whole lot versus uh, Garbotoxin. This Sycamore is very important here. Second energy on that Necrozma active, so it can retreat if he gets an attacker and that Field Blower. All right, let's see it. Field Blower? No! no he misses again. Wow, and looking now, Fabian might be able to take this game here. Yeah, Stadium unopposed, Garbotoxin unopposed. Nothing he can really do. Three pretty much useless Malamar on the bench for Adam. Yeah, essentially, if Fabian can get an end next turn, he could lock up the game here. Just being able to put Adam to, like, okay, you literally have nothing. <laughs> yeah, that, that was actually a really big miss. I don't know how many cards are left in Adam's deck, but, that, I mean, he, he needed the field blower all game, but this spot especially. Yeah, he just has to pass the turn back. Wow. What a quick turnaround. As soon as Fabian found those double colorless energy, uh, he's been looking like the favorite. And now he doesn't even really need to do much. He is going to go ahead and just... Oh, yeah. Oh, you're going to see it. We're oh, see yeah. It. Your boy. Oh, yeah. This is going to be great. Again, we see Fabian doing the play of uh, field blowing his own tool off his Garboder so he can activate trade again, trying down to zero cards in deck. Drawing the last puzzle of time so he can puzzle a time for that N to put Adam down to just two cards. And Fabian has game on board next turn with Cartana GX. Here we go. Floatstone back. Garbotoxin is active again. And, and wow, F Fabian really turned the corner due to uh, Adam not being able to find those field blowers. Yeah, honestly, I think Cartana is one of the perfect cards for a Zorark deck here in this format. Just because Zorark, it, you really like, if you go first, you'll probably take a knockout on your opponents like Nani X. And yeah. then once they start getting set up, you're going to take some GX knockouts. And then, well, you don't really need, can't, you can't clean it up. You're like, exactly. well, exactly. there's you're, a, you're there's, at odd prizes so often. There's, there's a few GX, and you can two-hit it, but that gives your opponent more time. Well, there's no more time for Adam right here. He needs something right now. Well, we find, he does find the Field Blower. So he's finally going to be able to deal with the Garbotoxin and the Parallel City, but it looks like that's just... Still, again, no one wants to be Blade GX'd on. <laughs> they will not let it go through. They just scoop before it happens. I mean, it's just embarrassing. <laughs> All right. I, I actually don't know what's going on. Well, uh, Ad Adam had it with the... Uh, he benched the Necrozma. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He was only at two prizes. Yeah, okay. He, when he hit the field blower, he could turn on the... Malamar's back on, take the game, and now he's 10-0. and 0. I, I was just so tunnel vision in the Kartana... <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> you're so obsessed with the Kartana. We've actually never even seen a blade on stream. Yet. I know. Oh, wow. 10 and 0 here. So North American International Championships. I don't exactly know how the math is going to work out for Adam. I, like, he, I don't know exactly how many points he'll need. Uh, he's certainly, I mean, he's at the top of the heap right now. No other 10 and 0s. Uh, but I think he's going to need a little bit more work even from here to make the top eight. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think it's going to be a win and maybe a couple ties. 
to lock him in. 35 seems like a good number. He'll definitely need another win. Yeah, It's just a sure. question of how much more than that he'll need. But uh, it, it's going to look pretty sweet for him. There's a ton of Buzzwall in day two, uh, along with just a few other matchups that seem pretty well for him. Like, there's a reason he's 10-0 here. Yeah, 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 I mean, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but so much of this, a tournament like this, is about uh, metagaming, right? Yeah. I mean, you have, you have so many players that it's really, it's hard to really pin down the metagame. I mean, we were looking at, what, a dozen different decks, roughly, that made day two. But if you can kind of make the correct prediction of, okay, I think these are going to be the big three decks, and you can just kind of prey on them, it's, you're just going to have an overwhelming advantage. Yeah, uh, and yeah, Psych Malmar uh, taking it down. Kind of struggled a little bit there, but last second got that Sycamore, got that Field Blower. Well, it was interesting because, like, if he just had the field blower earlier, which he, I think it was mathematically supposed oh, to. Oh, if he had it earlier, it was just... It wouldn't, it wouldn't even be yeah. close, right? So it's like, even under the most difficult circumstances for Adam, it wasn't, he just, you know, I mean, he did, that was his last turn to get it. Yeah. But he still had the out, right? Um, and I think, you know, with, with the normal amount of luck, maybe hitting the, I don't know, if we, I didn't remember if there's any field blowers prize or anything, but I think just, you know, drawing a little bit better, it would have just been a complete blowout. And it looks like we have our interview ready. Take it away, Anna. Hi, guys. I am backstage with Adam. How are you feeling after coming off stage? Very, very excited now because it's one more win to get in. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your standings. What does that one more win mean to you? So I'm at 10-0, which means I've got 30 points. And we've worked, kind of worked to any about 34 or 35 points. So I need to win one more game, and then I can just tie any game throughout the rest of the day and get into top eight. How does this fare into kind of the overall story of your competitive Pokemon career, such as it were? Tell us a little bit about your history. So I've been playing since the game first came out in the UK in 1999. I was about four years old at the time. Then we started going to a league in North London, which has got places like Sammy Sakum and Jassin, who a lot of people know. Um, been playing since then. Had a few good finishes in juniors and seniors. Been playing all that time. Made Worlds Invite every year apart from one. And yeah, just probably my best achievement so far. With a history like that, how does this event compare? What's it been like so far here at the North American International Championships? It's been amazing. We haven't had any tournament this big. I think the world's, the world's is big, but this is on another level. It's really good. It's nice to see so many different Pokemon players turn up, and it's, yeah, it's just really good. Tell us a little bit about specifically the match. What were some of the highlights as far as you're concerned? So the first game obviously was off stream because um, he, got very, uh, he got very unlucky. He had a dead start. I started Mewtwo, got a donk, and then it just carried on. So we just scooped the first game. Game two was quite close. Um, he got really, it was lucky for me that he missed the DCE quite early. Um, but the Mewtwo put in a lot of work. It killed the Trubbishes, killed the Garb. 